Sunday, July 1st, 4 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Guys, in this video, as all of you, most of you well know, we do UV readings three times a week now, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Here's the playlist. There's over a hundred different readings over the last couple of years. The UV is intense. It's not a phenomenon. It's a reality. And it's taking its toll on some delicate vegetation, some uh, crops that I'm seeing on a small scale right now that are damaged. They're severely uh, scorched, and it looks like it's from high UV. And I think I have proof from a gentleman from Colorado that did basically an experiment with some plants that he planted outside and a technique that he used to protect his plants from the UV and I think you'll find this video very educational and um, proof that it is in fact UV that's being very very harsh on plants. This is a little uh, melon plant that we had in our uh, backyard. My son planted this and it was doing great. You can see it's real healthy here and then all of a sudden these leaves here that were in the more direct sunlight, and you can tell they're in the direct, opposed to these, they're kind of in the indirect, they started to show signs of stress. They turned white within a matter of a day. And a couple days later, this thing was shriveled up to nothing. I didn't take a picture of it. I thought I had a picture, but um, I don't. I was just so disappointed because I did try to protect this thing too, uh, to no avail. It shriveled up and was just crushed this is in 2018. Back in 2014, it was the complete opposite. In that same backyard, we grew, or actually my son did again. This is a leaf from a spectacular uh, sunflower that he grew that reached towering heights. I don't think I'd ever seen one that tall, and I'd never seen one with leaves quite as big. That's why I took and framed them. There's a technique you can use to preserve them and put them in a frame. And these are over four years old, or just right at four years old. This was in 2014. And you can see a picture of how healthy the plants looked. That's my son standing underneath one of his plants. This was the main one. This is the biggest one. Very healthy, had no burnt leaves, did great. And then something happened after 2014. I'm getting pictures from California and Oregon of some damaged raspberries. I think this is the raspberries here. Viewer sent these in. They were great one day, went out the next to pick them as they had ripened. And you can see one side looks like they're sun scalded. These berries were on the outside of the bush, getting the majority of the direct sunlight throughout the course of the day. The berries on the inside of the bush that had some shade protection throughout the day were good. Um, they googled to see what could possibly be the problem. And I want to read you that email here in just a second. Uh, yes, it's this one right here. This is from uh, Sutherland, Oregon, and it's about those raspberries you just saw. Good morning. I'm submitting to you a photo of my raspberries. I live in southern Sutherland, Oregon, and have been observing many anomalies that you cover on your site for years now. This one, though, is new to me. Today, when I went out to pick my raspberries that ripened over the last few days, I noticed the whitening on a large majority of my outer edge ripened fruit. I looked it up to see what could possibly be causing this. Um, the article I found described this bleaching was from sun scalded, very high heat, or sun uv damage and that was from sutherland oregon these raspberries right here um, and it was very disappointing because it was a good crop i've also got a picture from let's see if i can find it here here we go san jose california viewers sent in these pictures never seen anything like this before with regard to their fruit trees and been doing this for a while these apricots that they picked off the tree, one common denominator that they all had with regard to the damage on the, on the fruit, the damaged side was facing south in the direct sunlight most of the day. And if you look at them closely, you can tell that they do look very uh, dehydrated and 
almost burnt in some cases. And it's just on the one side, and that would be the side that the viewer said was facing the south. Up here you're looking at the plums um, that normally this time of year are a deep purple. These are the plums they picked from last year. They look great. This year, something went wrong. It was much like the uh, sunflower that I just showed you. 2014, they grew absolutely fantastic. Never had one burnt leaf. Everything looked great. In fact, speaking of burnt leaves, this is the bush in the front of our house. That's sun damage from last year that never did recover. It's trying to, but I don't think it's going to. This picture was taken three weeks ago. This happened almost a year ago. And it got direct sunlight in the evening as the sun was setting. And that sunlight damaged this bush. You can see the leaves back here in the back were in the shade. The ones that were out here in the front, like the berries that were in the front, got uh, sun scalded. Uh, uh, the person here that sent these in from San Jose also sent in an email. I'll read that to you right here. It says, hello, I'm noticing strange things going on with my small fruit orchard near San Jose, California. As you can see in the photo, the apricots have a dark brown area on them. This has never happened before, before this year. The spots are rough and feel like dried skin. It's like they were burned by the sun in those areas. All the apricot fruits had this spot on the south-facing side of the fruit. Also, the tree that they came off of was healthy. It was not wilting, and it's been fertilized and well-watered. Uh, well watered. This fruit is from a tree that's about 25 years old and has never made fruit like this. I don't know if it's the UV causing this strange issue or what. I thought you would find it interesting. And more than likely, in my humble opinion, it is from the UV. I want to show you something that a gentleman from Colorado did. Kind of an experiment, basically, and it was successful. And I want to show you that experiment right now. This is the video that was sent in by John from Cannon City, Colorado. And what he's going to show you in this video are plants that were all planted on the same day. You're going to see plants that were planted and left outside in the direct sunlight. You're going to see the same type of plants planted in the same way, but they were put in a shade, a shaded environment. And you're going to see a dramatic difference from the ones that you can see here are wilted and dried up. These were well watered, well taken care of. They just could not handle the direct sunlight. So let me play this video for you. It's a very educational video, uh, very well done. So let's take a look at it. Well, these are my grow pots here in Cannon City, Colorado. And uh, they're not doing very good in direct sunlight. You can see two of my, on the upper two on the right here, my melon just shriveled up and died. And like I said, these are all in direct sunlight. Now I'd like to show you my uh, other plants that were planted in pots at the same exact time. Except that I put it in a box with a tape glow that blocks out a lot of the UV. And I want to show you what the difference is between what you just saw in those buckets and what you see in here. Wow. What a difference. They were all planted at the same time. This is this is my shade box that I made. It's shade cloth that I just got from Walmart. Put a frame on it. Anyway, you can see the difference with the UV is doing. You might want to like to know about it. So there's one way to protect your your plants on a smaller scale when you're talking many acres and a field or an orchard. It's a little tougher challenge, but you can see that worked, telling me that it is in fact the harsh sunlight, the UV, that's more than likely shriveling these plants up from extreme dehydration. That's what I think. 
I had, uh, that's my son's little plant that looked exactly like that. Pretty much overnight, it just couldn't take the intense light. But you can see when it's in the indirect light, they do quite well. So I want to thank you, John, for sharing that uh, with us. Very good job. So anyway, guys, um, I wanted to share these UV observations. I think it is uh, a direct result from the intense sunlight. It does feel different nowadays. Something changed after 2014. Like I showed you the picture of this amazing leaf. I'd never seen one that big. I even Googled the size of this thing. I couldn't even find one that was close. Um, direct sunlight, as you can see here, all day long. After 2014, though, something changed. We can't grow anything out there now without it burning up and just shriveling up, just like the ones you saw in uh, Colorado. So, very informative video. Uh, I thank you, John, once again for, for sharing that. I wanted to check out the real-time lightning map here at the website, MrMBB333.com, linked below in the description box. Storms moving through the Midwest again and will probably persist for the next few days. Scattered. The lift index is still there. And the high temperatures are going to create electrical storms at night. Large hail. And we saw that uh, this evening. And pretty good chance we'll see it again tomorrow. Right now the lightning strikes are 28,000 plus and counting. One other thing I wanted to look at real quick was the interactive weather map. You can click on that tab, upper left-hand side, and you can see where the high temperatures were today. Storms have um, broken out this evening, and in fact, that right there is showing us a tornado in Nebraska, central Nebraska. Blue diamonds are hail, green circles are strong thunderstorms, gold squares are high wind. This is at IntelliCast.com. You can find that interactive weather radar map here at the website, MrMBB333.com. All this information here is real-time data updated 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Monitoring Yellowstone, Schumann Resonance, which, by the way, the Schumann Resonance was pretty mellow today. That was a pleasant surprise. I haven't seen that for several days in a row, but the Schumann, pretty mellow. All the links below in the description box, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Have a super day. Got some more interesting content coming up later on this afternoon. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.